after we all had to wait for six months, part two of Dragon Gero Lee's reincarnation of Yamcha manga is finally out. And what I want to do here is tell you guys about part two of this manga, why you should check it out, my thoughts on it. And if you didn't see my review for the first chapter of this manga, definitely check it out. I will leave a link down below as well as at the end of this video for you guys to go check that out. But you should probably pause this video and go watch that first so that you kind of know the overall backstory going into chapter two of this series. Now, when we last left off our hero, the teenage fanboy of Dragon Ball whose mind was somehow transported into the Dragon Ball universe inside of Yamcha's brain and body, he just got done changing the timeline of Dragon Ball by destroying the Saibai men. But how did this version of Yamcha, how did the boy get Get so strong. Well, because the boy is a huge fan of Dragon Ball, he knew the entire manga front to back and he knew the entire story and thus this allowed him to prepare for things to come and have knowledge of things that the characters in the universe have no idea about. And chapter 2 explores that. So with the knowledge that every Dragon Ball fan has, we discover exactly what it is that was done to make Yamcha so strong and that is of course going first and foremost to planet Namek. So Yamcha speaks with Mr. Popo and they take the ship that was at Yunza Bit Heights, the same one they used in the Namek arc, to go to planet Namek. And Yamcha would immediately go meet up with Saichoro, the Grand Elder of Namek, known as Guru in the English dub, to have his dormant powers unlocked. But that's not the only thing that happened. There is a great scene where the Grand Elder of Namek puts his hand on Yamcha's head and finds out the truth that it's not actually Yamcha, but because he understands the Grand Elder is empathetic to the cause and he unlocks Yamcha's power, his dormant power, but that's not all. Yamcha also went to go train with Nail to get himself ready for the fight between Vegeta and Nappa. But there is a huge miscalculation. He forgot that the Saiyans came to Earth actually less than a year. It wasn't one full year, it was a little bit less than a year, and thus it would take Yamcha quite some time to make it from Namek to Earth. So what does he do? He asks another favor of the Namekians, and he does this by summoning Porunga, the Namekian Super Shenlong, to transport Yamcha from Namek to Earth in time to fight the Saiyans. So we cut back to the present time in the story and Vegeta reads his power level and surprising everybody, Yamcha's power is over 10,000. And Nappa says there is no way that an Earthling can be that strong. It must be broken. And Yamcha's like, nah, bro, I really am that strong at this point. So Nappa attacks Yamcha blindly and Yamcha blows Nappa away with a Kamehameha. One shot, dead. Insane. So we skip a little bit more time and it's finally down to Vegeta by himself against the team of Goku and Yamcha. And Yamcha comes up with a plan to distract Vegeta while Goku delivers the final blow. So Yamcha rushes in and starts to fight Vegeta with great vengeance and furious anger, screaming that he's not going to let Vegeta steal his woman away. I won't let you steal her. And Vegeta's like, Bulma, what the hell are you talking about? What the heck is a Bulma? And it's so funny because Yamcha is fighting against a man who did not even know that he would be the one to knock up his then-girlfriend. Of course, Vegeta is way too strong for Yamcha, and Yamcha contemplates the idea of showing Vegeta a video of him doing the bingo dance from Battle of Gods, but instead, he uses the old look-over-there trick. He says, look, it's Beerus, the god of destruction. Vegeta turns his head, Yamcha kicks Vegeta, and Goku fires a gigantic Kamehameha, destroying Vegeta and putting tears in the eyes of Miss DBZ Babe. And so Yamcha completely obliterated Vegeta. He and Goku were victorious and nobody died. Tien, Chaozu, Krillin, Gohan, Piccolo, everybody survived this huge battle. Vegeta was finished, or was he? No, big surprise, he did not die. Vegeta snuck away in his space pod to be seen again in the future maybe? he survived. So even then, the future was not changed, but Yamcha realizes that, wait a minute, 
the future sort of was changed and starts to think about the fact that Vegeta would eventually give birth to Trunks and Trunks would eventually save Goku's life. So at the end of the day, Yamcha can't kill Vegeta. And Yamcha also knows that Vegeta would be very important in future battles with future villains. So at the end of the day, even if he tried to change the timeline, it would actually end up being for the worse because we need Vegeta to impregnate Bulma, give birth to Trunks, to create the heart virus medicine, and well, you know all that. But the manga chapter ends with a huge cliffhanger because amongst our heroes, there is another being who has the same key as Yamcha, and apparently he's been through this many, many times. What could this be? We'll find out whenever Chapter 3 comes out. I would say next month, but we are not sure. I did have a good time reading this manga. I love that Dragon Garo Lee and the Shueisha Toei Dragon Ball Story Group is putting stuff like this out, and I want more stuff like this in the future. Go ahead and give me your thoughts down below on the Yamcha manga. Do you like it? Do you want more manga like this with these weird what-if scenarios? Do you dig it? Let me know. With that being said, I'll bring this video to an end. Thank you for your continued support of Geekdom 101, and check out these videos for more.